hey, this is my W800 Casio digital wristwatch. Uh, I got it a while back because I wanted a nice watch to replace my Pebble ever since I don't use it anymore and I didn't want a smartwatch. This is a really good watch and it kind of got me into collecting Casio watches as you see. But this is a good all-arounder because it was affordable and it had a lot of features. One feature it has that I don't really need though is multiple alarms. What I really wanted was a countdown timer. Well, it turns out this watch does have a countdown timer, but in order to activate it, you gotta do some desoldering, which sounds perfect for me, so why don't we hit this mod up and try and do it right now while I got it on the bench. Uh, sorry, this isn't actually a W800, it's a W800H, it says, so, eh, close enough. What you're really looking for is the numbers here for the uh, module number inside. If it lines up with the ones that have this feature, it should be usable. Let's take a look inside. Now that we're in, you can see the module itself. There's the Casio logo. The module number says 3239 on it. But the backing said 3240. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Hopefully this is the right module and I'll be able to make the, uh, the modification to it. Let's take the module out here. I know this spring can come out and you don't want to lose it. And there it is, that's all the actual watch. The buttons just push into these little spring contacts. Looks like they share a common ground. And they just press against the castellated edges of the PCB here. You know, there's something beautiful about LCD screens. I know they're not really in vogue anymore, and everybody loves their smartwatches, and I hate to sound like an old man, but uh, I do love these LCD displays. There's just something very simple and beautiful about them. Although they're not simple, there's quite a bit of technology that goes into them, even today, but they still look pretty good if you ask me. All right, let's look at the next part. Uh, before I go on further, I'm going to do a little research. Okay, after doing some more research, I feel a little more comfortable with what's going on here. Um, so it looks like this module, or something like it, a revision like it, is used in a number of different Casio watches. And so what's going on is this module um, has some features that can be activated or deactivated by bridging jumpers on the PCB. So we're going to go further into it now and we'll take a look at those. But before we do, I thought this was interesting. First, I thought this had something to do with retention of the uh, back casing, but you can see that spring in addition to uh, this leaf here, contacts the piezo, spe piezo speaker on the back here. And you know, when you have it pushed down, you can actually hear it beeping. I don't know, I thought that was cool. I, I think these things are neat. Little tiny little cases and everything. All right, let's take off this part here, being careful not to upset the natural balance of things. I should probably take the battery out, but I'm not gonna. Oh, wow, look at that bracket. Yeah, you wouldn't wanna mess with that. I did mess with it, but I think it probably went like this. Yeah, something like that probably. Jeez, fiddly. All right, and here is our PCB. So there is the silicon that's actually driving the thing under that you know blob and then you can see here on this side are the bridgings and you can see up there I think that's the one 
according to what I'm reading online, that's the one that actually controls the functionality for the timer. Well, we're about to find out. Let's take a look on the internet just one more time, see what other people have done, and then if I can get it sorted, I will I will uh, take that off. I'm going to have to look at that under a scope. Okay, so some helpful soul on the internet, Ian, Ian R. Reese, I believe is his name, has set up a post on their github.io where they actually took the board and gave a sort of quasi pinout of what's going on here. So starting from the top up here, it is timer disable. And then it looks like uh, unknown, unknown. So these two shorted pins, that's how it comes from the factory. Why they're not sure. Okay. And then the next one is five time alarms. So you can have five different alarms, unknown, and then dual time disable. I don't think I want five time alarms or five alarms. So I'm just going to get rid of, you know, I'm just going to ignore that. I definitely don't want to disable dual time. So I'm going to leave that alone. And I think I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to take some copper braid and I'm going to undo this and we'll put it together and hopefully I'll have a timer. So let's try that. Look down here. You got our, our uh, LED diode, our LED diode, our light admitting diode diode uh, that actually shines on the screen and does the backlight. Just a little white LED in there, or I guess it's green. Yeah, it must be green. And anyways, it shines into this light diffuser here and then, you know, lights up the whole screen. These are pretty cool. These are the uh, zebra connectors for the LCD screen. And uh, if you've ever opened up a Tamagotchi, you know what these look like. They're, they're pretty cool. They're just like a membrane that have a conductor and sandwiched between them in rows to meet up with these, um, you know, these pads for the LCD screen. It's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty interesting technology. I'm just going to leave them where they are though. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fire up the soldering iron and try and get this thing on the road and we'll try and remove that jumper and then we can put this to bed. All right, I'm about ready to do this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this soldering iron over this thing. All right, just to try and get it a little molten. I'm going to take my copper braid here, set it down on the pad and just and scoop away all that nice solder till it is nice and clean. So now we can start putting this thing back together. If only to see how well we did. I'm going to use the LED to line it up. So you can see the LED is here. There's the LED diffuser, so I'll line it up that way. Seems like the best idea. Just clips back together seemingly as easy as you please. Dual timer, Friday, alarm, chronometer, dual time. I don't know, maybe it didn't work here. Okay, so it turns out that there was actually another step that not everybody needed to do, but I needed to do. It seems that in order to make it work properly, you got to clear the memory. I think by bridging these two points where these two holes are with a pair of tweezers, it says AC and minus here, which I think it's referring to these two holes. And it says after battery replacement, contact AC with AC with ground using tweezers. And I think what this does is just resets the device and clears memory because now once I did that, I can go over here and there is now a timer setting and I can start it, uh, I think with this button, is it this one? No, that's the light. Where's the start? There it is, 24 hours and I can, re you know, stop, reset it and change it to be a three hour timer and start and stop it in the usual way. And there we go. So now my watch has a countdown timer. Fantastic. I don't know if this changes the multi alarms, but you know, honestly, I don't really use the alarms. I just use it as a timepiece. 
uh, for you know review of quick review of what time it is and uh, you know uh, timing things like on the stove or you know TV time for my kid stuff like that where I just need a basic timer that'll tell me when the time's up you know so I don't have to keep looking at it so this is pretty great it's a little tiny hack like this this uh, very cheap watch now has a feature that it doesn't it isn't advertised to have and to me that's I mean that's everything right I mean that's the fun of it all being able to bust out your own soldering iron and alter the uh, behavior of a device like this pretty great so again I'm not sure why this uh, module says 3239 but the backing plate says 3240 uh, but it didn't seem to be an issue here uh, if you want to do this with your own watch there's tons of videos like this online I mean this is not <laughs> This is probably not the best tutorial video on how to do this. I just wanted to test it out and make a quick video about it. But I'll post some links down below that uh, sort of show you the ins and outs of this, including that wonderful post that uh, somebody has actually characterized each of these jumpers, which is great. There's more features that you can turn on. You can disable dual time, which I think is having the time down here in the lower left. You can add five alarms if you so wish. You can disable this timer again, all sorts of stuff. I'm not sure what sort of effect this will have on the daily operation of the watch. You know, flipping a bit like that in software, maybe it changes some behavior elsewhere. I would, I, I don't know if I'd go on and do another modification unless it's adding functionality to the watch that's available on another watch on the market. Otherwise, there may be some gotchas in software that could cause problems, uh, weird behavior, uh, things you wouldn't want to happen on a mission critical piece of equipment like a watch where you need to rely on it. But if you have fun messing around with stuff like this, uh, it might be a fun little afternoon project to take it apart. It was really difficult to take apart. And now I'll put it back together and, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is just sort of clean the screen and uh, the interior glass here, just in case there's any dust on there. I should probably blow arrow. Eh, maybe I will. I can already see some dust build up in there from me touching stuff. Eh, it'll never be perfect, right? It's a nice thick piece of acrylic or whatever that is there. Okay, take this, drop it down into it. Ever so ginger. Right, and we'll get the back plate on here. I do want to be sort of careful. I don't want to ruin the waterproofing of the watch. Beeps are all nice. That's another feature I like about this watch. I get I don't know much about digital watches right now or, or you know, I just started collecting them. But I do love this feature. Or it goes back to the standard clock face with a little, you know, a beep that's a higher pitch than the normal beeps. So before you go to turn the light on, you can, by sound, set it to the right page and then, you know, turn your back light on. Anyways. Alright. Well, there you have it, the Casio W800H countdown timer mod. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. My watch does something it didn't do before, and all it took was the liberal application of some copper braid and a soldering iron. All right, that's it. So long.